So you've said in my OPA styled yes or no answers um, that neck strengthening exercises do not prevent concussion. Can we dive into that, please, and why neck stiffness is what we're more after? Um, and also talking about the peak acceler acceleration of the head and the brain and all that sort of stuff. Far away. Okay. Um, like I said, concussion happens at 70 to 120 Gs of acceleration. Now, the um, studies that have reconstructed impacts using uh, modeling and game footage and slow motion cameras to capture when that individual hits that peak acceleration level. And there's a study that was done by Viano. Uh, in 2007 that I always quote, cause it's just a really, you know, cool study, but basically they looked at when, and it was NFL players. They looked at when do they hit peak acceleration? And they found that peak acceleration of the player getting hit, who is usually the one getting concussed is between the first six and 20 milliseconds after impact. So basically by the time they make contact, that concussions already happened. Yep. Right. So they're already at peak acceleration within the first six to 20 milliseconds. So there's also evidence back in the day, and this actually started in the forties where they found that next stiffness, and this is a study they did on cats where they would try to give cats concussion injuries. Um, <laughs> and they found that if, if they stabilized the neck of the cat and didn't allow it to move at all. So if they just kind of really blocked the neck and there was no movement, they would, they would swing a pendulum down and try to give the cat, you know, a concussion and they wouldn't be able to create concussion injury, meaning they wouldn't be able to actually create something where they would have observable signs where they'd be falling over or whatever. They'd lose balance. They'd have, you know, observable signs of, of a concussion, but if they let go of that neck stiffness, where if they allowed the head to move even slightly, right? Cause if there's no head movement, there's no acceleration, right? Like if I hit my, if you get hit in the head and there's no movement of your head, there's no acceleration that's going to happen. So you can't injure the brain if that's how it's injured is acceleration. You know, I mean, you could make the argument, there may be some fluid waves or something that may happen, but um, so anyway, head acceleration requires movement of the neck. So the idea is if we were to make a rigid neck, we could reduce acceleration of the head. So the idea became let's have athletes strengthen their necks. Okay. And they started looking at it and the hypothesis in all these early studies, and this kind of was like, you know, you know, late, um, you know, like 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, 13 kind of thing when this was going on, all these studies hypothesis was that next, next strength, those athletes that had higher neck strength would have less concussions. They would have lower resultant head accelerations following impacts, um, all of these things. And it was all, it didn't matter. They found that those that had the weakest necks were getting hit just as hard as those with the strongest necks. Their heads were undergoing just as much acceleration. There was no um, reduced risk of concussion in those that had the strongest necks. And I think the reason for that is because neck stiffness and neck strength are two different things, right? So we know that from the CAT study, we're actually looking at stiffness because we're holding the neck rigid. But neck in order to have neck stiffness, you need to have good neck strength, but you also need to have time to contract the muscles of the neck to make the neck stiff, right? When you're playing a sport, your head is moving around, your head's on a swivel. You may be a receiver looking over your shoulder. So you're not actively contracting your neck. So the question is how fast, if I needed to contract my neck is, is, you know, to get that strength, to make it stiff, how much time would I need? And when you look at like EEG studies on this from, from biomechanical studies of, of, of neck muscle activation, it takes you 150 milliseconds to, to even initiate contraction or no 90 milliseconds, sorry, to even initiate contraction of the muscles of your neck voluntarily. It takes you another 150 milliseconds to even get to half of the contractile strength of those muscles. So what did I say? Concussion happens in the first six to 20 milliseconds. You, you need 300 milliseconds to even get to half of the, you know, strength of this super strong neck that you have. Mm. So because, because most concussions happen when the player that's getting hit is unaware they're about to get hit, they don't even have time to react, right? Because you basically need a half a second 
to get to, to use that stiff neck. And if you have half a second, my argument is you'd probably just get out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like if, if you're running like, why would you just, you know, some people you're going to go right through it and you're going to, you're going to tighten up and you're going to stiffen and that's going to be protective for you. So I think it could be protective if you're aware the hits coming, but with most concussions happening when the person's unaware, this is why neck strength, I think doesn't hold up because neck stiffness and neck strength are two different things, right? You have to be aware. So there's actually been studies looking at like neuro, um, neuromuscular activation, like, you know, the speed at which you can contract your neck muscles actually matters more uh, than pure strength. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that type of stuff is, is interesting because it, then it kind of, it kind of shows you why that, why that might be. So athletes working on purely neck strength, you're not going to actually reduce your concussion risk at all. Working on maybe your vision will, and they've actually done studies to show that vision training before a season is protective against concussion because now you have more game awareness. You're able to see the play better. You may, you know, be able to react that split second quicker and, and avoid that hit or, you know, stiffen up in time. So um, I think there's other ways around it. I just think next, next strength by itself is too simplistic and it doesn't work. Yeah, agreed and beautifully answered. I think you're becoming more game aware and being able to get out of the road and you've always got those players in any sport that never get injured. They never get hit. <clears throat> They're so intelligent with how they play and they always just seem to never get hit. And you're like, how do they get through a whole season and a whole career never getting hit? Yeah. <clears throat> it's remarkable. Yeah. yeah. But that's and, like and maybe that's here. Yeah, exactly. And maybe that's something that we need to focus on more than focusing on the next strengthening focus on these these women and men getting better at just be, becoming better at their sport so they can get out of the way and they become better at their game sense and then potentially that is going to reduce the the potential risk of getting a concussion purely because you're just getting out of the way all the time mm -hmm. it's well, I mean, very it's very hard in aussie rules football though and that's one thing i wanted to say was it's a 360 degree game there's people coming from all angles, much like, say, mm -hmm. hockey. Mm -hmm. And I, most of my concussions were all just because I didn't see them coming. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit tricky in that regard. But when it is more of a linear sport like rugby or rugby league or something like that, well, that's a little bit more um, potentially relevant. Um, it is tricky in a game like Aussie Rules. Yeah, if somebody's coming from behind you, you know, you have no no chance. I mean, even football, you know, it's it's – for the most part, a linear game, but you know, the ball, the, the player that's going to hit you is in front of you and you're looking over your shoulder to catch exactly coming from, from behind you. You just, you have no chance. You just, you're just, you're out there, right. In, in, in hockey, we call that a suicide pass. Somebody yeah. passing up and you're looking behind you to catch that pass. That's called a suey. Like somebody's gonna, you're gonna get smoked coming through the middle. Right. And that's how a lot of concussions end up happening is open ice hits. Player has no, re no, you know, awareness that the hits coming, um, not even thinking about it. And it's just, it's happened before they know it.